In the individual reviews for all of these video cards, I kept advising people to trade some of the excess performance available when running at low settings for some better graphical fidelity. In the second installment of the series, I'm taking my own advice here and I'll use three video cards to discover the highest quality preset where the gaming experience is still adequate. For the single player title selected, this would mean 45 FPS and above for the average FPS and 30 FPS and above for the 1% lows. And while the target resolution is 1080, there will be cases where a small drop in resolution will allow playing the game at higher settings. Before we go into the gaming results, let's take a look at the hardware being used. The GTX 970, a card that is quickly becoming my favorite. The R920X, the oldest of the cards being tested providing a similar level of performance as the previously mentioned card, but almost at twice the TDP. And the Sapphire Mini ITX version of the RX 570, at the same performance level and TDP as the Nvidia card. And the system used is the old but reliable, soon to be renamed Rusty but Trusty, Z230 HP workstation using the i7-4772 equivalent Xeon and 32GB of DDR3 RAM running at 1600MHz in dual channel. To kick things off, we'll attempt to rescue the daughter of the US president in the remake of Resident Evil 4. Now, I typically tested this game at the lowest possible settings, but there is a marked difference when using the balanced quality preset. As a result, we'll aim for using that one instead of prioritized performance, and we'll adjust the resolution if needed. At 1080 resolution, the GTX 970 averaged 42 FPS, 3 less than our target, and provided 1% loss of 28, 2 less than what we aimed for. Now, the game is slow paced, and I won't fault anybody for playing the game at full 1080 while using this card. The R9290X cleared only the average FPS bar at 47 FPS. The 1% loss, however, turned out to be worse than what the GTX 970 managed at just 24. As for the RX 570, it runs according to my expectations with the average FPS of 47. The 1% loss of 29 is actually close enough to my threshold to say that the card can run the game at full 1080. However, dropping the resolution to 1600 by 900 makes life a lot easier for the first two cards, who now average 53 and 58 FPS respectively, with 1% loss of 32 and 28 respectively. As for the RX 570, with an average of 57 and 1% loss of 32, the game experience is firmly planted in the enjoyable territory. The second selected game places its action mostly outdoors and trades plaga infected villagers for local armed forces supporting a Sikh dictator. Yes, we're testing Far Cry 6. The visuals drop gradually when switching between the ultra, high and medium presets, so there is some room to maneuver if performance seems inadequate, while keeping the 1080 resolution. At the ultra preset, I will consider the GTX 970 as adequate, despite its 44 FPS average, missing the mark by 1, in the built-in benchmark. The 1% loss is in the mid-30s, and this is the W in the FTW. Ah. Yeah, do drop a like if you enjoy this kind of cringe, by the way. The r 9 x however, clears both thresholds, with 46 FPS for the average and 34 for the 1% lows. And the RX 570 averages 47 FPS and smokes all other cards with 39 FPS for the 1% lows. The high preset has all cards performing a bit better, as seen on the screen. The GTX 970 has an improved average by 8 FPS, the r 9 x improves by 10 FPS on average, and the RX 570 by 9. This would probably be the preset to play the game at, since it has a bit of a performance reserve. The next game feels to me like a good alternative to Fallout 4, providing a similar gaming experience, but this time around on alien planets. The outer world was tested at a few presets, at 1080 resolution, but with some mixed results. As seen on screen, the high settings ends up causing textures not loading properly. Funny enough, it, this means that you will get a better visual experience by dropping from high to medium or low, at least with the 4GB cars tested today. At 1080 medium, the GTX 970 averaged 59 FPS and provided 1% loss of 34 FPS. This would be adequate to run the game. The r 9 x averaged 51 FPS, which is fine, but had its 1% lows in the high 20s. Unfortunately, this makes the FPS drops noticeable. The RX 570 averaged 58 FPS and the 1% lows of 35. It has enough performance to run the game as is. 
At low settings, all three cards enjoy a boost of performance, with the R9 to 90X clearing the 30 FPS thresholds for the 1% lows. Averages run at 69 for the GTX 970, 59 for the Hawaii based card, and 69 again for the RX 570. However, due to the drop of quality, an alternative to 1080 low would be 1600 by 900 medium. The R9 to 90X would then clear both criteria for acceptable performance with the 1% lows at 33 FPS. If the Nvidia card won the 1% lows totals in the previous video, in this one is the Radeon RX 570 that pulls ahead. And while the margins are small, a win is a win. These three cards can run single player games that are much younger than the GPUs powering them. There are a few more games and settings that I'd like to try, so make sure to subscribe if you like this kind of content. As for this video, we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it and I'll see you